Doctor, my physician told me to stop riding my bike because my prostate was getting larger. This is a very common question both here in the office and on the channel, and it's also one of the biggest myths in urology, riding a bicycle and prostate problems. Where does this confusion come from? Today we're going to debunk this and understand where this confusion comes from and why you can ride a bicycle without worry because it won't cause any problems for your prostate. Hello, I'm Dr. Tiago and I'm a urologist here in Sao Paulo. Where does this confusion come from? Well, first you need to understand what the prostate is and where it is located. The prostate is a gland found only in men. Women do not have a prostate and it is located right at the exit of the bladder. It is the first part of the urinary tract and the prostate in terms of its location is very close to the perineum, which is the area between the anus and the scrotum. The prostate has a function, which is to produce semen. One of the substances that the prostate produces is PSA. And PSA is a glycoprotein with a very specific function, which is to make semen more fluid so that the sperm can move more easily, facilitating the fertilization process during conception. PSA, as many of you already know, we've talked about this many times here on the channel, is a blood test that we measure mainly for prostate cancer screening. When we look at PSA, it's a substance that's much more present in semen, as I mentioned. After all, its purpose is to make semen more fluid, so there's much more PSA in semen than in blood. But during the whole process of PSA production, there is a small leakage that escapes from the prostate and enters the bloodstream. And we measure this leakage through a blood test, so some prostate diseases cause an elevation in PSA. And here comes the first point of confusion. Imagine that the prostate is like an orange full of juice. If you squeeze it, keep pressing, more juice starts to leak out. So when you go to have your PSA tested, if you rode a bicycle 24 or 48 hours before, that pressure in the perineal region also presses on the prostate and causes more PSA to leak from the prostate into the blood. This will cause a rise in the PSA value, but it's temporary and not due to any prostate disease. However, it can lead to unnecessary tests, patient anxiety. After all, he gets worried that he might have prostate cancer and often, unnecessary exams, right? A cascade of a bunch of tests and a misinterpretation of the PSA. Therefore, we always advise patients who are going to take the PSA test not to ride a bicycle, motorcycle, horse, or do any activity that puts pressure on the perineal region for at least 48 hours before the test. But physical activity itself does not cause problems in the prostate. So now you understand why you need to avoid riding a bicycle before having your PSA test done. But doctor, what about prostate diseases? Specifically, let's talk about hyperplasia, prostatitis, and prostate cancer. Let's go. Benign prostatic hyperplasia is the benign growth, as the name itself suggests, of the prostate. It is extremely common. It is estimated that on average, 50% of men over the age of 50, and this number can reach up to 80% in those over 70 or 80 years old, have some degree of prostate enlargement. In the past, there were some studies that might have suggested this increase was related to cycling, but that idea has been debunked for a long time, okay? In fact, the most robust and recent studies have shown that actually cycling is a protective factor against benign prostatic hyperplasia. After all, men who engage in more physical activity, who are more active, who have a routine of physical exercise, including cycling, have a lower chance of developing benign prostatic hyperplasia, okay? So, cycling is actually a protective factor, a friend, an ally to your prostate, not a villain. And now let's talk about prostatitis. Here, I need you to pay attention because there is a lot of confusion about these terms. Prostatitis is different from BPH, benign prostatic hyperplasia. Commonly, many people refer to benign prostatic hyperplasia as an enlarged prostate. This is a term that causes confusion. The term swelling suggests something temporary. If you hit your leg, you get inflammation. Say you bump your knee on the door or the edge of the door, it gets inflamed, it swells up, and after some time, once the inflammation goes away, it gets better, right? Benign prostatic hyperplasia is a growth of tissue, not swelling. Prostatitis is an acute inflammation of the prostate 
usually caused by some kind of bacteria. An acute prostatitis is an infection. Just like you can get in your throat, it can also happen in the prostate. So the prostate increases in size due to swelling and then you experience pain when urinating, difficulty urinating, that feeling that you can't fully empty your bladder, you may have a fever and other symptoms. And now going back to our knee analogy, it's like you hit your knee on the door. If you go running, the act of running itself doesn't cause swelling, it doesn't cause the knee problem. But if your knee is already inflamed, if you've hit your knee and decide to run, it will make the symptoms worse. So when you have prostatitis, an acute infection of the prostate riding a bicycle because you're putting pressure on that area is not a good idea as it will make the symptoms worse. So when a patient has an acute inflammation of the prostate, we advise, just as if someone has a swollen foot or ankle, to avoid physical activity. So you should avoid putting pressure on the prostate, wait for it to get better, let the swelling go down, and then, yes, you're cleared. But riding a bicycle did not cause the prostatitis. Understand that this is different. When someone has prostatitis, we avoid riding a bicycle because it will worsen the symptoms. But it is not the cause of prostatitis. I need you to understand this difference between hyperplasia and prostatitis, okay? And finally, we have prostate cancer, which is the most feared disease among all men. We know that it is the most common cancer affecting the male population, excluding skin cancers. And every time we talk about the prostate, the fear of cancer comes to men's minds. There was a study, already an old one, that raised the possibility that riding a bicycle could increase the incidence the chance of a man developing prostate cancer. But when these studies were analyzed more carefully and new studies were conducted, it was actually found that this was not true. What happened in that first study was that there was a selection bias. So what does that mean? When you look at men in their 50s or 60s who ride bicycles, who are more physically active, who exercise more, this group of men tends to take better care of their health and undergo more exams. So they tend to have a higher rate of prostate cancer diagnosis than those who don't get tested. Notice that it's a higher diagnosis rate, not a higher incidence of cancer. The big problem is that the other group, the ones who aren't cycling and aren't getting tested, they also have cancer, but it's not recorded, it's not diagnosed. Do you understand? So this is where the problem in that study arose, the one that suggested there could be an association. But today we already have numerous studies that were better conducted that eliminated this issue of selection bias and have already shown that there is no association, no evidence, no causality between cycling and the development of prostate cancer. In fact, what we believe is that cycling, like any other physical activity, is actually a protective factor against prostate cancer. So to wrap things up and give you some practical information if you like cycling regarding adaptation and safety for the perineal area and improvement of prostate symptoms. First, as you already know, if you're going to have a PSA test, you should avoid cycling, riding a motorcycle, or horseback riding for 48 hours beforehand. Anything that puts pressure on the perineum should be avoided when collecting the PSA sample to prevent any misinterpretation. Second, if you have prostatitis, an acute inflammation of your prostate, you should rest and avoid cycling. Third, we recommend that for those who cycle a lot, who really have the habit of being an athlete or a cyclist, you should use those more suitable saddles, the ones with a cutout in the middle, which will relieve pressure on the perineum and shift the pressure a bit more to the sides, onto the side bones, which are called the ischium, the most appropriate area. Why is that? It's not because putting pressure there will cause prostate problems, but because several nerves run through that perineal region. So, some men start using unsuitable saddles and this causes symptoms of discomfort, a tingling sensation or pain in the perineal area due to excessive pressure on the nerves that pass through that region. Not because it's a prostate problem, okay? So look for these more suitable saddles. And if you ride a bike and started having symptoms of hyperplasia, it's not the bike's fault. The reason is that your prostate started to grow and you shouldn't stop cycling because of it. You should see a urologist and get the proper diagnosis. Deal? I hope this video has cleared this up for you once and for all, okay? I hope you enjoyed it.
Don't forget to like this video because the more you like it, the more YouTube shares this information with people who need it and with those who still believe that cycling causes prostate problems. Oh, and one last request, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. This is very important so I can keep making this kind of content and clarifying these urological topics that are extremely important for men's health. That's all for now. I'm Dr. Tiago and see you in the next video.